boys and girls, today we're going to explore painting and we're going to focus on texture. Texture, as you know, is an element of art and it's also the way that something feels. When you go shopping at the store today, the first thing you're going to need to get is a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what color of paper you get, you get whatever piece of paper that you want. The other thing you're going to need to get is a paintbrush. We'll actually just be using our paintbrush to put the paint on the paper, but we won't be using it to move the paint around. For that, we're going to use a tool that we would like to explore the texture. I'm holding two, but you only have to get one. So find one of those tools that when you touch it, it has an interesting texture. The way that it feels it kind of speaks to you and you want to explore what it can do with your painting. Once you have your piece of paper, your paintbrush, and your texture tool, take it to your seat and use that magical drawing device that we refer to as a pencil to write your name. Please do not forget your teacher code. When you're finished, make sure to flip your paper over so your name is on the back and return your pencil. All right, so I said that you will be using this brush to add the paint to your paper, but your tool that you pick out to explore texture. So today we're going to use two primary colors. We'll be using red and yellow. We will also be using white to make a color light. We will not be using blue. We'll use blue another time. So when you use your paintbrush today, usually I would say not to use it like a shovel and scoop up the paint, but today you will need to do that. So I've scooped up a little bit of red and I'm just using my paintbrush today to add the paint to my paper. I'm not using it to move the paint around, just adding it to the paper. I don't have a cup for water to clean my brush, so check this out. I've got my messy mat. I'm just going to wipe it back and forth like I'm sweeping, and I'll keep sweeping until my paintbrush is no longer putting paint on the messy mat. That looks pretty clean to me. Even if the bristles don't look clean, look dudes, that's clean enough. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and get some yellow and I'm putting it on there thickly, remember? And I'm just putting it in some empty places trying to fill my paper. The last color that I have to get is white. White can make colors light. When you make a color light, it is called a tint, not a tint. We're not going camping, tint, T-I-N-T. All right, now my paper is full of two primary colors, red and yellow and white, which can make it light. And I'm done with this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and set him aside. Thank you, paintbrush, for doing a fine job. Now I'm going to explore texture. When you're exploring texture, I want you to go ahead and feel your texture tool first and think about what kind of texture it has. If I were going to describe this to you, I would say it feels a little scratchy, kind of coarse. Coarse is another word that means not soft, but a little bit hard. And I'm interested to see what kind of texture it can make on my painting. So now I'm going to use my tool by tapping it. I'm almost printing. I'm not painting. Painting, remember, is when you move the paint around. Printing is when you press something down and pick it back up. So I'm printing with my texture tool, and it's also creating not only cool textures, but beautiful new colors. I've got some pink. I'm starting to see a little bit of orange. I'm making sure to fill up my entire paper with my printed texture. You could even move your tool a little bit, have it do a little bit of a twist. Remember, I'm not painting, I'm printing. So sometimes I can tap it, sometimes I can move it. Now look at my painting. It's got a texture on it, but if I were to touch this painting, well, first of all, I wouldn't because it's wet, but if it were dry and I were to touch it with my eyes closed, it would probably feel smooth. When I open my eyes, I would see that it actually does have a texture. When something is smooth, but it looks like it would have a different texture if you were to touch it, that's called an implied texture. It's not a texture you can actually 
feel, but it's one that you can see. All right, I'm making sure I fill my whole piece of paper. Boys and girls, when you're finished with one painting, if you would like to please put this on the drying rack, if you would like to do another one with a different tool, you may do so. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Boys and girls, now that we've learned about the artist Bebo and we've created our beautiful textured paper, we are going to create ourselves a bird inspired by the artist Bebo. To do that though, boys and girls, we will have to go shopping for a paintbrush once we have our piece of paper. When Bebo creates his birds, he uses a lot of shapes and you know shapes is an element of art. He uses both geometric shapes like circles circles, rectangles, triangles, squares, and diamonds. But he also uses something called organic shapes. And organic shapes are shapes that can be found in nature, like the shape of a leaf, the shape of a feather, the shape of a cloud. Those would be considered organic shapes. So to make our bird today, we will be using both geometric and organic shapes. So let's first start with the shape for the eye. So before you even begin that, Bebo talked about composition. Composition is where you place things. If I'm about to paint the eye of my bird, I know that probably near the bottom of my paper is not the best idea because then I won't have enough room for the body. If I have it too close to the top of my paper, it might not be great because then I won't have room for the top of the head. On the sides, too close to those edges might not be the best bet either. So think before you paint. That's called thinking about your composition or placement of things. So I think right here, a little bit above the middle would be a good spot for an eye. And for that, I'll be using the geometric shape, otherwise known as a circle. Now that I've got that, notice that I filled my circle in when a circle is filled in, it's called a dot. Let's say that my dot got a little bit wonky. Boys and girls, it's okay. You can either create it into a beautiful oops or try to alter it a bit. Still looks okay to me. All right, now I'm going to make a circle around my dot. I'm painting a circle around my dot. There we go, it looks like I've got a nice lovely donut. Boys and girls, my next step is to create the head. So far I have the pupil and the eye and I've been using geometric shapes. I'm using a third geometric shape. I'm using that circle one more time. This is for the shape of my bird's head. And you can see that my paintbrush ballerina, she's on her tippy toes. She never scoots around on her bottom. Now I'm filling in that part of the head. I am now filling in the outside of the head. Now, boys and girls, I'm ready to work on my beak. And before I do that, I have to think about the composition of my bird. Do I want my bird facing to the right, to the left, looking up, or looking down? I think I want my bird looking this way. Maybe there's something interesting he sees or she sees off the side of the paper. To do that, I'm just gonna make a line for the beak. And I think I want the beak to be open, so I'll do another one. I know I need to make my beak a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna make this into a triangle by adding another line and another one. And I went ahead and filled it in. Bebo told me that sometimes he uses the back of his brush to create a texture. Let's see if that'll work for me. 
So what I'm doing right now, boys and girls, is I'm scraping into my painting with my paintbrush. It only works though if my paint is wet. And I'm just drawing some implied texture. Texture that you can't really feel, but you could see it with your eyes. All right, so now I've got my bird. I think what I'll work on next is the body for the bird. So for that, I think I will start with a line, probably a diagonal line for the back. Hmm, that looks pretty good. And then I know that I need a body. So to create the body, I'm going to use a curved line like this and it will end up creating a half circle. And if I don't like the shape of it, I can always imagine in my mind a way to fix it. It never helps to become upset with your artwork or frustrated. Just take a deep breath <sighs> and think of a different solution. There's always something you can do. All right, so I'm just filling in the body and then maybe I can use that trick again of creating implied texture to make some lines for the body. Let's see what I can do for that. Maybe there's going to be a line for a wing since my bird is not flying, it's going to be walking. So maybe I can make a line like that and that could create kind of a line for my wing. There we go. If I scratched a couple times, it begins to show up a little bit better. Okay, friends. Now I'm ready to draw some legs, my favorite part. I'm gonna give him nice, long walking legs with two curved lines. And I think I'll add some extra lines for the feet. Let's see. Boop. 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 All right, now I've got some cute little feet, but I feel like he's missing something. I think he needs nice little, some feathers at the top of his head, almost like a crown for the bird. That will look pretty cool, I think. And then maybe I should think about some tail feathers. Birds have tail feathers that help them balance a little bit. Kind of looks like a chicken. All right, so I think I'll make a little tail feather and it will be a repeat of what I painted here. Sometimes in artwork, artists repeat designs, lines, shapes, or color in their artwork for a couple of reasons. It adds interest. It also creates a little bit of a balance. All right, friends, now that my bird is complete, I'm ready to start decorating the background a little bit. So let's see, I think what I'll do is use some lines, so maybe some squiggle lines to kind of create a border or a frame around the edges. Again, I'm still using black because that will repeat or echo the design of the bird. Remember that word repeat was one of our words we just mentioned. It's also something called a principle of design. It's one of those little spices we can add to our work of art to make it all the more interesting and rich. All right, so there we go. Hmm, that looks pretty awesome, but now I think I'm ready to add some more colors. So I'm gonna clean my brush and I think this time I'll add some white. And I'm just going to create a pattern of white throughout my artwork, maybe making some dots. I'm not going to paint on my bird. I really want him to be emphasized. I want him to stand out. So I'm not going to paint over him. I'm just going to leave him the way he is. He's nice and bold and he really stands out. Piece of cake. So very easy to use the elements of art to create a beautiful masterpiece. Inspired by Bebo. <laughs>
looking for a sign Sit on the bank and watch your muddy roll by Close my eyes and listen to the blue crane cry Yeah.